When it comes to having a great day, it's something everyone wants a big piece of, right? Nobody wants to have a bad day. Whether we admit it or not, having sheer confidence at the end of each day knowing we got everything done we wanted and more is a heck of a feeling. Sometimes to the point where the morning felt like yesterday, like, wow, did I do all of that today? I live for those days. And these don't have to be by chance or luck. They can be created to where they happen more based on a few small things you do to start your day right, making the rest of your day a great one. The morning maker routine and these six simple tools I'm going to share with you over the next couple of minutes came from a lot of trial and error due to a guy who is myself, had no compelling reason to jump out of bed each day, was a horrible morning person, skinny, never had a dream or even something he wanted to carry out for himself. And it took forever to accomplish even small tasks like cleaning his own room. And these six habits came when I decided I didn't want to be worthless anymore and I'm going to create life on my terms. And so can you. So can we all. And by the way, these are not my methods. These are methods that I've learned over time after not being a morning person for so long and becoming sick of it. After so much trial and error, these six methods gave me that euphoric feeling to start each and every day of mine. And that means amazing, by the way. So how would you like to feel euphoric? These six tips added to your morning or even just a few of them, I know will surely help. And the first tip I have that's very powerful for myself is starting your morning off by priming. The word meditation is one that comes with more feelings of negativity or I'd rather not more than yay, let's meditate. And I know of an awesome alternative and priming is a way of putting your body in a strong state where your mind and body will respond according to how you tell them to. Sounds pretty powerful, right? For example, since we're speaking on mornings here, if you woke up all groggy and tired and had the ability to simply tell yourself not to be tired and at work, that would be pretty cool, right? Well, it's possible. So here's how it goes. And before we begin, the best part is it's always less than 10 minutes. If you don't have an extra 10 minutes in your day, you don't have a life. So we're going to begin this process by sitting down on a couch, a chair, hard surface preferably, but we're going to have our hands over our head, our back nice and straight. We don't want to be in a slouch position starting this off, right? Make the most of the few minutes that you're going to do this exercise with. So we're going to have our hands up overhead. We're going to bring our elbows and our hands down to the side of our body as we exhale. <sighs> I'm going to bring our hands back up over our head as we inhale. We're going to do that for 30 reps. Two sets of 30 reps. You can take a little break in between. And what we're going to do is think thoughts of gratitude. You want to sit there and be appreciative for a moment that happened yesterday. Maybe something someone did for you the week before. Maybe it's a childhood memory that just made you feel joyful, made you feel happy. And these thoughts can really just add a great deal of gratitude to our day, starting us off in that amazing state of graciousness. And this is an awesome way to just start off your day without being come overwhelmed by the burdens or the to-dos that we have to go through throughout the day. And the third step of this is to sit there in silence, to once again, not allow ourselves to just become overconsumed by the many thoughts that enter our mind every single minute, sitting there in silence and not judging yourself for not thinking thoughts, not judging yourself for thinking thoughts, just sitting there in silence and allowing to come to your mind, whatever comes and trying to release the burdens of the thoughts of the things you have to do or the things you may be behind on. Just allow the creativity and the silence to come into your mind. Keep those eyes closed and just sit there for a few minutes. Most people don't even have a few moments of silence in their day because from the moment they're up to the moment they end their day, they're thinking thoughts and a lot of them aren't good ones. So this is just an amazing strategy that takes a few minutes in your day to sit down Close your eyes and allow yourself to think thoughts of gratitude and think nothing at all. And the second tool is making every I will into a commitment. So rather reinforcing to yourself as an affirmation, which is simply just a statement such as, I'm a millionaire, I am a millionaire, but knowing deep in your mind, your inner self knows it isn't true. So you're falsifying the sentence you're giving yourself when you know deep down it's simply not true. So instead of telling yourself who you are or who you want to be, simply state what you're committed to. And these four questions below answered daily will create a commitment machine out of yourself. And the creative part is the answers to these questions can be about the same day or about a decade from now. Each day you answer each of these four, it can be completely different in the context in which comes up. So don't overthink it. Just commit to what comes to mind for that moment. And so the first question is, what are you committed to? The second question is, why is it deeply meaningful to you? The third being, what activities will you do to ensure you succeed? And four is, when specifically will you commit to doing those activities. So 
write these down, go back and listen to it, write these down and maybe try and implement these, answer these questions each and every day and it can help clarify what you're after. Maybe what you're after in that day or like I said, next month, next week, or maybe 10 years from now. Just let what comes to your mind come, write it down every single day and you'll notice yourself just clarifying what you want out of yourself and out of your life. And so the third tool is to visualize a great day. It's been said that if you win the day, you win the week, then you win the month and then the year. So it begins with the first one, simply winning the day and making it great before it even begins, not even knowing what may come. Have you ever seen something to come before it happens, like envisioning your team winning the game in high school before it even starts, or knowing your report card is going to reflect greatness, or maybe not so great before you even get it? Preparing for the day by visualizing it being great is something we can all do. And if we decide to visualize the end result of the day by being a positive one, we have a much greater chance of achieving just that. The more vivid and descriptive you can be in your own mind before the day begins, the more control over it you will have through your actions as you go about that day and making this tool even more effective. And this allows you to, to worry less, not more, about any upcoming task to come your way in the day, whether it's good or bad. So the fourth tool, which is one maybe a lot of us already know about, but is definitely vital and important, is to move your body first thing in the morning. And this may be something that you can imagine as being beneficial, whether you already do it regularly, or having done it in the past, or maybe you have never done so, but moving your body for just a few minutes in the morning can literally put yourself in a whole different state to where you are forced to feel awake to feel alive and revitalize. I'm talking a mere 60 seconds of jumping jacks, a five minute rotation of a few body weight exercises, jumping on a mini rebounder trampoline while brushing your teeth in the morning, which I hope you do. That's my routine of how I brush my teeth in the morning. But this is not only forcefully putting your body into a joyful, woken state where you aren't groggy or moving like a sloth, but it also lowers cortisol levels, which is a stress hormone, which can put you in a much better place for fat loss and prime your body for better utilization of the food you eat throughout the day, such as burning it off as energy rather than storing it as body fat. So find your groove in the morning, whether you already work out at some point in the day or not, and, and find a way to move for just five to 15 minutes in the morning, whether it be a simple power walk, some yoga, or a brief body weight calisthenic workout, you'll feel this one instantly. And so the fifth tool that I utilize every day and have for you is to read a few pages every day. I know, it's an exciting one. How would you say that makes most people feel though? Even yourself after hearing the words, you should read every day. And nowadays in a world where we can mindlessly scroll on social media and in our times of unproductivity, why on earth would you want to read a book? It's safe to say most people get the feeling similar to that of being assigned homework right at the end of the day, 3 p.m. when school's about to get out. So hear me out when I break this down real quick. If you read just 10 pages a day, no, let's say five, five pages of a book each day, that's around like 1,800 pages a year. A self-development book on average is 300 pages or so. So that's six self-development books a year, reading five pages a day. And by self-development, I mean to improve your life in any area how to have a better marriage or how to better your relationship, there's a book on that. How to become a better listener, there's a book on that. How to have a better relationship with food, yep, plenty of books on that. I mean, you're literally separating yourself from 95% of society who chooses not to intentionally fill their brain with productive shit. <laughs> I once heard if you don't put in your head what you choose, then weeds grow. <laughs> Take just a few minutes of your day and read a few pages of something that truly entices you in an area that you choose. And I promise you'll notice yourself and your life being much better because of it. And so the sixth and final tool I have for you, I'll, I'll just say it like this, beginning, middle, and end your day with a planner. A physical hold in your hand planner is one of the best ways you can be organized. It's there in front of your face every day. I'm sure you've also heard in some way that your thumb is connected to your brain. Well, it is. So when you write something you have to do in your day down in your planner versus just on your phone calendar, it just sticks with you a bit more. A phone calendar is great too. You can set it and get notifications, set reminders, and is a much more portable way when on the go. But along with that, it's much easier to disregard it as it is a text from a certain someone you don't want to hear from. And the message intentionally goes unread. Oops, sorry friend, I don't want to talk to. I never saw it. <laughs> there are many great planners out there for high performance, but they all have a simple structure to start your day with, plan and execute your day with, and then end your day with. And we all have busy lives, so it's one of the most common excuses we hear when someone says they can't do something. I'm busy. 
So if we are all busy and have the same excuse, why not plan for the busy a little better? Work, kids, a wife, family, a home, a life, <laughs> we all have one or a few of them. Writing the shit down you have to deal with on a daily basis and you'll have a better chance of being less forgetful, more efficient, and more productive. No more pile-up lists of to-dos because they were written down, accomplished, and even if they weren't accomplished, writing that same task down day after day will get old eventually, and one day you'll just do it. <laughs> so with these six morning maker habits, I make a part of my every day to make sure I can make the most out of my 24 hours, which we all have, so that I can be less busy and more productive, so that I can enjoy the things I love about life, is that of what we can all do to make small, subtle changes. Ones as to which I have listed here and ones I have also not listed. As I mentioned, these are not all my methods. I gathered them from my own reading and learning from other great influencers who have done great things in their life and enjoyed the journey throughout. It's been stated many times before and you may have heard knowledge is power, but it really isn't. Knowledge is potential power. Action is power. You have to actually do the thing you say you're going to do. Sometimes having to even do the thing you don't want to do. And this is why I shared these six tools above, not because they are the way to a great day, leading to a great week, a great year, and a great life, but because they are one way of getting there much quicker, along with a multitude of other great ways to get there, which I have not mentioned. You just have to go find them to try them and then find what works for you. What I like about what I've shared with you here, other than I practice each of these myself every day, is that they're all simple and time conscious. We all have these lives we currently live and we can change what we're doing drastically and get different results, but why when we can make minor tweaks that don't change much at all in our current day, but make all the difference in the coming days? That's working smarter, not harder, and I encourage you to do the same with me, whether it's through these six morning maker tools I've shared with you today, or those that you seek out on your own.